Imagine a world of no more privacy, where your every purchase was monitored and recorded in a database, where your every belonging was numbered, where someone many states away or perhaps in another country had a record of everything you had ever bought, of everything you owned, of every item of clothing in your closet, every pair of shoes. Imagine a world where even people were numbered and tracked at a distance. to talk about RFID, which is Radio Frequency Identification. It's a topic I've been working on since 2002 when I first stumbled upon a, an industry consortium, uh, which later turned into over 100 of the world's biggest global corporations, working on uh, plans to put tiny computer chips on every physical item manufactured on planet Earth. Um, we've come a long way since the 15 months ago when I last addressed uh, a, a group in this room and talked about the very basics of RFID. I'm going to start off tonight with a bit of an overview, though I recommend if you'd like to learn more about RFID, you may want to go back and look at the RFID Tracking Everything Everywhere video, which is a pretty thorough introduction. So on that note, let's, let's first talk about what the technology is. Um, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, the ID being the ID part. Um, what it is is a tiny computer chip hooked up to an antenna. The computer chip, as you can see from the image here, can be incredibly small, in fact the size of a speck of dust in some cases. The antenna, which you see on the right, uh, it typically is on an adhesive, what they call a substrate, which is a little bit of plastic. It has some uh, metallic conductive material uh, imprinted onto it that connects with the tiny chip and enables it to send information at a distance. But essentially, if you have one of these tiny chips hooked up to an antenna and you hit it with the right amount of energy, you can actually get it to talk back to you. Uh, what you see here is an RFID reader. This is a handheld reader device. The reader devices come in a whole variety of different formats. The handheld reader um, is essentially being held up to an RFID tag. Now the tag is when you have the tiny chip in the middle, you have the antennas coming out from that. And what the reader device does is it sends out a pulse of electromagnetic energy or radio energy. That energy is picked up by the sort of metallic X that you see on there, which is the antenna. The metallic X amplifies the energy, directs it to the chip, stimulates the chip with that little bit of power to essentially say, here I am and here's my unique number or the information that I contain. Then that information is then sent back through the antenna back to the reader device. And the reader device will either store the information, it might display it on a screen, or it might actually be a wireless device hooked up through a wireless LAN in order to communicate that to a computer server or to a database at a distance. From Viewed from the outside, the tag can look an awful lot like just a plain old price tag sticker, or in this case, a barcode sticker. What you're seeing here is an adhesive tag on the top of a Pantene shampoo bottle. Uh, the barcode part is the part that the consumer would see. And when you peel it off and turn it over, you would see the image down below, which actually shows you the antenna running around and around. This one looks um, up close, if you could actually see it. It looks less like kind of a shiny copper metal, and it looks more like a flat matte brown color. Uh, this will be talking about where I obtained this Pantene shampoo bottle tag. It was not in the United States. It was actually in Germany. And I will be uh, going into details about my trip to Germany, where I actually did find individual items being tagged with, uh, with RFID. All right, um, I, so far I've been talking about the tiny chips hooked up to the antennas. And as you saw, those are, you know, they're fairly good sized. The, the smallest one I've seen is about the size of a dime. The biggest one I've seen is maybe the size of a, a fairly good size index card. So they're not, they're not so small that one would just slip past you unnoticed unless it was maybe hidden or sandwiched between the layers of cardboard or so in some other way sort of hidden into the product. But if it's stuck on the outside, you'll probably be able to see it. Um, there's now a, a, a chip, the Hitachi Mu chip, which is extremely small, where they've actually incorporated the antenna into the uh, chip design itself. So the tiny little device here that you see is actually compared to grains of rice to give you a sense of just how incredibly small that is. Now, the smaller the antenna, the shorter the read range. 
And read range means when you hold that, that reader device up to it, how far away can you get and still be able to actually read the data on the tag? Now with this one, you actually have to get almost close enough to touch it. It's, a, it's an extremely close read range because the antenna is so very small, it doesn't have the power to transmit at a distance. Now these tags, the application they're looking for is anti-counterfeiting and uh, perhaps one of the most worrisome applications for RFID, which is tagging money, tagging currency. Um, if you tag currency with one of these tags, what it means is that rather than being a $20 bill, you could now say this is a $20 bill with a unique item number, XYZ803684, and you could record that information at the point when that bill comes out of, say, an ATM machine. So when you go and you um, pop in your ATM card or you stand in line at the bank teller and you're given, say, five $20 bills, it would be possible if one of these chips was in those five $20 bills to capture each unique number as they come out, each serial number, and automatically within the computer system link up that number with your name. So later on, if you find those bills, you know, I, I don't know, maybe a, a panhandler, you, you give him a $20 bill because it's Christmas time and you're feeling especially generous, and he then turns around and uh, uses it to buy drugs. And there's a drug bust, and someone takes those $20 bills and says, we, we want to be able to figure out who has been paying these drug dealers and who's involved in the drug trade. So it would then be possible to take a reader device, hold it right up against the currency, capture that number, and then look in the banking system and see, you know, to whom were those, were those $20 bills last issued? When, when did we last see that currency within uh, the banking system? Um, obviously, for that to happen would take an awful lot of infrastructure, which is not currently in place. Um, but that is one of the plans for RFID and for these tiny Mu chips. These are made by um, Hitachi out of Japan. I know that Hitachi has had discussions about tagging currency both with the Japanese government and also with the, um, the EU government um, uh, to talking about tagging high denomination euro banknotes. Of course, doing that would eliminate potentially the anonymity of cash which would mean uh, essentially that uh, the, the one remaining way that we can make purchases and stay out of the databases and stay out of the sort of surveillance mode that has been put in place for our other purchases would vanish if we did put these in cash. One of the ways that you can kill an RFID tag is by overstimulating it. And the easiest way to do that is pop it in your microwave. Now, when you do that, you run a very high risk that it will catch fire. And I've actually done this before. I've taken RFID tags and said, oh, don't try it. I'll pop it in the microwave. And you hear a pop, and then you see flames. <laughs> so I don't recommend doing this. It's probably, um, it's not, not only not good for the item that you put in the microwave, but it's probably not good for your microwave either. So probably not the best method uh, for doing this. And certainly not for currency um, for a couple reasons. If you've got a 10,000 yen banknote, and they're relying on that little chip in there as the authentication to make sure that it's not counterfeit, and you put it in the, in the microwave oven and you blow out the chip, then you just blew 10,000 yen. So probably not a good idea um, if that's going to be the authentication method to ensure that, that, that the currency isn't counterfeit. Here, here's the rub. Let's say that there were these tiny mu chips in $20 bills. I would have no way of determining that. And in fact, I just, um, I just had lunch with some engineers from Japan who had flown all the way out to Japan. Um, I assumed they were meeting with lots of people until I asked, well, now, who else are you meeting with? And they said, oh, Honorable Catherine, we've only come out to meet with you, and, uh, which was, which was quite, a, quite an interesting experience. But when I asked these Japanese engineers who are working on RFID, well, now tell me, do you know if your high denomination yen banknotes have RFID tags in them? Their response was, well, we don't know. And I said, well, why don't you go back to your laboratory, your, your really you know, high-tech high gizmo RFID lab, and find out. And the guy said, well, I wouldn't really have a way to do that. And I said, well, you're the RFID engineer. That's what you do for a living. You, know, you have a laboratory at you know, your company set up specifically to do that. And this is a very well-known, big Japanese technology firm. And he said, well, there's no way to detect an RFID chip if you don't know the protocol that it's operating at. You can't get it to talk to you. So here's a guy with a laboratory 